Hello guys, this is Robert with uh, Nerdgasm Gaming. Just thought I'd do a quick video on the uh, community challenge for Planet Zoo for Cheetahs. Um, so in building this, really, I got the idea I wanted to have kind of a, I guess a moat or some kind of river in front of the thing. And I really wanted um, the uh, patrons there at the zoo to be able to go like kind of inside of a cave and be able to check the cheetahs out like they're sleeping their sleeping arrangements and stuff like that. So um, I went pretty large. What I've found um, that I've done a few times in Planet Zoo is try to get the um, uh, the exhibit close to what the requirements are um, that it lists in like the bio thing, this thing right here. Um, but what I found is by the time you do that and if you get it kind of close, by the time you start adding other animals and you add rocks and scenery and stuff like that, it cuts it down. So this is the first one that I just decided I'm going to go pretty big and uh, to make sure I had enough room. So um, I, the way I have the zoo set up is um, I kind of had you know, like the Asian part kind of in the center and now I'm getting to the parts that are going to be like the African section and stuff like that. So I wanted to have this cool walkway um, and be able to see it from either side, be able to see the animals from either side. So um, on one side, I wanted uh, an area where people could go underneath and kind of view. And I ended up doing it on both sides because I just thought it was so neat. Um, so far, the zoo is kind of still small. So people use it from one side. This is the side they typically use it from um, and not so much the other. Um, but uh what I do like to do is kind of lay like a rough boundary out first. Um, and I like to place things like I use rocks here and sometimes I use other things, but just to kind of give me an aerial view of what, of where I want to place things um, later, um, you know, like the structures and things like this that I'm testing out. I hadn't decided yet whether I wanted to make um, a dirt mound under that far walkway or whether I was just going to use rocks. I ended up using rocks and I think I really like the way it turned out. Um, this is probably some of the best rock work I've done so far in the game. It did take me a little bit to figure out, um, I, like I said, I'm, I'm fairly new at this. So it took me a little bit to figure out what I wanted where, um, in terms of the, uh, sorry, I'm messing with settings here because I want to make sure you can't hear that feedback in the background from the speakers. Excuse me. <clears throat> So anyway, so um, I'm getting things organized and um, trying to square things off, and I wanted part of it to be brick, which I'll later cover up with rock, but I wanted it to be there because I wanted these big picture windows in the thing. And so um, first kind of just laying out the general overview of the, or the, the general boundaries of the exhibit um, and then kind of fine-tune things later on. This did take me quite a while, so um, I got this going at like 600% speed, so it took me a good three hours to do it, and I'm slower, and I'm getting used to the controls and things like that. I did play Coaster um, a while back uh, and then moved to uh, Planet Zoo. I was so waiting for Planet Zoo to come out because I, I like love these type of games, and I think they did such a fantastic job with Coaster, and that was really fun and was really waiting for a zoo thing. Um, so I think they just did a fantastic job. There's some things, of course, just like every game that, you know, bother me or wish were improved. And I think a lot of those things they'll address later on. But um, I think they just did a fantastic job out of the gate. The animals are really cool and engaging. I mean, the the uh, graphics and everything are amazing. Um, so here what I like to do is, like, get an animal, drop it off in the exhibit, and then kind of pause. I think a lot of streamers do it this way, or some anyway. Um, pause and kind of build it around it so you can make sure the animal's happiness levels and the and the uh, agriculture and things like that match. Um, so it did. I'm really happy with the rock work, the way the rock work came out. Um, I spent a lot of time doing it. I wanted kind of sort of these like craggy looking um, uh, temperate rocks, I think is what these are. I can't remember offhand, but um, anyway, so I, originally I was just going to do the, the rocks around the viewing areas but as i got into it it just didn't seem like a good place where i would mold the rocks like into actually earth and i was going to make the whole back of the exhibit just like raised earth and kind of run them into it and uh, paint that with the terrain painter and just make it look rocky but the more i get into it and the rock work is going pretty quick um and i'm getting a little bit more proficient at it again kind of you know remembering the controls a little bit from uh uh, coaster and things like that so um, I decided to go ahead and do the whole thing with rock so uh, but this turned really good this turned out really good um, I'm pretty happy about it there's still some things in terms of like buildings and things like that I'm, I'm fairly satisfied I guess so far with um, 
the way I'm doing the overall scenery. Um, there, it's going to take me some time, but I'll get used to doing a little bit better with uh, buildings. I typically use lots of the elements that they that they gave us because I think they did a pretty good job with giving us stuff. And I, I like, the, I guess, the way that it all goes together and things like that, just because I'm you know like that i guess but um so you know like i said i wanted these big picture windows so i was able to get the rocks on the top and bottom um but so anyway in building buildings i use lots of the elements that they already give us if i if there's really something i can't find or something you know that they just haven't put in then i'll i'll you know start uh start making some custom pieces but to be honest i still got a ways to go before i'm really proficient at that um so i use a lot of the pieces they gave us this thing is just kind of cruising along. We're building the back part of it. And then, you know, once I had, uh, once I was satisfied with the section, I would kind of grab piece of that section, do a little bit of modifications, and then kind of grow it. I find it goes fairly fast that way. Instead of kind of reinventing the wheel the entire way through, I'll grab big sections of it. Um, I was a little undecided whether I wanted the rocks to go, to like collide into the curb for the walkway. Most of the time I drew them back in if they, if they went over, but um, occasionally I'll let them run into it. Um, like I said, you know, here, I, this, that, like that one rock is probably my favorite rock. It's just so great for building this kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, and there's me you know, kind of moving, moving the things in, um, the pathing I'm still getting a little bit used to on certain things. I really wanted to get it really uniform and nice. And I, I do like the way it snaps when it does, um, and there it gets kind of, kind of wonky, but, um, anyway, so, uh, you know, and also on both sides, I wanted this kind of dirt path instead of like the regular zoo stuff. I just wanted like a simple, you know, kind of dusty dirt African like kind of looking path that uh, uh, the patrons can like walk around and stuff. Um, I have found if you kind of add pieces of pathing and then, you know, right click to delete them, it'll expand the path. Like if there's a corner, but you want a smoother corner, you can smooth it out. If you just place a piece of path and then right click to delete the extension, it will give you some nice rounding, some, some rounder curves there and things like that. This part was actually really fun when I'm doing, doing the main, I guess what I would call the main, this, the animal cave is going to be on the inside of this exhibit right here. Um, this part I thought really turned out good. And I did want it, you know, you, I guess I wanted it anyway, to where it was somewhat natural looking, but I still want it to be looking like, you know, it's been manufactured and it sits at a zoo. So the, like that kind of stuff is okay with me. So, you know, where I, where I'm using some of the rock cladding and stuff later, or, you know, to cover the pillars and things like that, you know, that kind of stuff for at least the way, for the way I wanted the zoo to look, you know, I think uh, turns out okay. Um, so that part's here coming up here in just a short and then i'm just kind of adding some detail if things start to look too i guess uniform they really did a fantastic job at like giving lots of options um so you can bend and move things around and stuff like this and of course at this speed it's awesome because it looks like i'm pretty proficient with the uh, tools when actually this took me quite a while but uh but i'll get there i've seen some of the other broadcasters that are just you know spectacular at doing this stuff and they're very very quick um but yeah it just takes a little bit of patience and um i like to make sure that you know kind of things and you know i'm trying to cover up all the brickwork and stuff like that i wanted this nice underground cover now the first video um this first video anyway uh, that i'm gonna do or that i did um is more just like the rough layout of the exhibit um things like that i'll have a part two where i kind of finish it off and add some add some details and you know that sort of thing um, but this is really just the rough overall layout so um, you know I wanted the the keeper to be able to enter here I did add a keeper building uh, that I custom made that'll be in a different video that kind of goes on the other side of this exhibit um, you guys have to tell me I am curious about how many keepers it takes to um, effectively manage uh, you know an exhibit and kind of what that timeline looks like I've noticed that um, in some of my first zoos, I just, you know, put a whole bunch of general keepers just kind of all over the place and hope they overlapped enough, uh, and it worked. And then now as the, the more that I'm watching and the more that I'm doing and noticing that, uh, assigning work zones keeps them, I guess, a little bit more efficient. So I've been trying to do that, but, I, but I am having a hard time figuring out exactly what the ratio is, you know, keepers to exhibits is, is the square footage in the exhibits, obviously, cause they got to clean it and they got to walk around. Um, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, I do like, you know, creating some traffic ways here, 
of dirt and things where the animals would go more often and, you know, walk through more often to kind of give a little bit of path, you know, to it so you can see the dirt's worn down and things like that. Um, I did want some of this raised. I wanted some kind of like kind of African plateau type thing I can do. And I, I do like going in. I'll do both. Usually I'll paint um, with the rock painter a little bit on the edges and then rock painter a little bit with the edges and then I'll go back in and add some actual boulders and things to just enhance it. Um, but I do like some of that, the rock painting. I think I like the way it looks. Um, I really, I had a difficult time with this kind of moat in front. The weirdest thing was that uh, it, it said that they could get out of it even despite, and I guess, you know, obviously cats can swim and so can cheetahs. So um, they could get out. I have thought I could make the moat wide enough or fill it with water and just every time um, that was their escape route. So it did take me a little bit of tweaking to figure out exactly how to get it to work. And then, like I said here, I'm, I'm just getting some some sections of rock and re replacing them um, on this back side here because I didn't want that was a long wall and I didn't want to do it all exactly by hand. Um, and there probably is in some of these things a little bit of extra rocks that are in there. Some have fallen, you know, below. So I guess from an economical standpoint. I probably could have done better and uh, made sure we didn't have as many, you know, extra rocks to fall below the surface. So that might be something when you guys are building yours, maybe you want to pay better attention to. I had the money at this point in the zoo, so it didn't bother me that much. I wanted to, you know, go a little bit quicker um, and not have to redesign this entire back wall. So we'll let that guy kind of finish up again um but i am having a great time playing the game it's just really really fun um i haven't had much i've been trying to get this youtube channel up and running so i haven't had a ton of time to actually just sit down and play it i've been focusing on uh you know building you know exhibits here and there and and buildings and things like that um so i haven't actually haven't i don't think sat down and had got to have like a you know a nice long session and just play it but uh, i was hoping to do to be able to do that with this uh this community challenge for the cheetah to try to get some of those and yeah so there you can see my problem um that and no matter how deep i made that thing or how high i made that wall those guys could always get out of it because i guess and they just jump over and swim and it took me a little bit to figure out that oh they're actually you know swimming out of the exhibit and so oddly enough it was kind of a weird fix and it'll show it here uh, by the end of the video here but um certain plants well most plants are going to uh, inhibit animal you know the animal crossing anyway so what i ended up doing is on the inside of the water so i could keep the outer border fairly clean i didn't want another section of barrier there i didn't want glass and i didn't want anything well I, I guess i wanted to add railing but i really didn't want to add you know a big glass piece or block or you know something like that so on the inside of the water i added um just some reeds so i think it was elephant grass in strips um, and made it kind of like the border. It's still stuck to the, the general regional theme, uh, you know, of where they were at. I did that, but I didn't like how low the water sat and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't get it resolved here. And it was just, you know, I was caving in the ground underneath the exhibit and I wasn't happy about that. So, um, I ended up dialing all that back, you know, like this did nothing. So, and I want, really wanted the water to the very top, um, of the edge here. So, I ended up going in and just using strips of elephant grass on the inside of the exhibit to kind of block the animal's access to the river. Now, I guess in terms of a real zoo, probably realistically wouldn't do that because they'd leap over it. Um, but for this, it worked. So this is me building out the, you know, the cheetah uh, sleeping quarters. Of the structure i made it quite big um originally what i didn't know is because i wasn't paying close enough attention um to the uh, statistics of the animal when i built this my plan was to just you know pump out all kinds of cheetahs and i'd put one one male in here and a whole bunch of females i figured they would uh, go like that but um it's actually just one for one uh as i was reading in the thing once i finally slowed down so i made this monstrous exhibit uh it's way bigger than the cheetahs actually need and uh, ended up having to uh, just, I tried to import another female into the exhibit and of course they, her and the other female fought. So I ended up having to uh, take her out of there and, and uh, donate her anyway. Um, 
So, but anyway, so like this exhibit, I'm leaving some holes like in the ceiling. I kind of I like that look of you know them being able to, or some sunlight being able to get through and and things like that. Um, and I did go fairly large in this exhibit because like I said, I figured I would have all these cheetahs running around, and uh, they'd all want beds. So. that is not supposed to be like a lion king rock right there i just wanted a little bit of uh um again kind of you know keeping it to where the audience knows it's a manufactured exhibit it's not naturally forming like this but um as you can tell that's another one of my favorite rocks that big flat rock that narrow flat rock is just like one of the coolest things ever so it's really super handy for all kinds of things um so i made this monstrous underneath section i figured i have all kinds of cheetahs but now you know by the end of the by the end of this build, uh, my cheetahs are extremely happy. They have all kinds of room, all kinds of climb room. Um, I didn't uh, I didn't add a ton, but I had a little bit. Um, I probably could use a little bit of work on my uh, on my adding some scenery, like the in terms of the trees and the, the foliage and things like that. But you know I'll get better with that with time. I did want some some kind of nice big trees in here, but. She just don't want a ton of things in the exhibit, and it goes rather quickly, so I had to use it sparingly. Um, I have found that uh, if you place things on the outside of the exhibit for the animals that don't particularly care for um, for things inside the exhibit, some, some natural kind of plants that are regional specific on the outside tend to work kind of well, at least setting the stage, um, you know, to keep it to keep it in theme. Um, so I tinkered around with this wall for quite a while and lots of times I'll, if there's pieces that I like, you know, that I run across cause there's so many and you could, you know, just be here for days looking at all of them. So I'll kind of grab them from the menu and just drop them on the sidewalk or in the exhibit or whatever. until I can figure out what to do with them here. I wanted some kind of, you know, not really spiky dangerous, but then that's what it looked like to me. I was like, that thing looks dangerous. It just doesn't seem very realistic, but I did want some kind of long spread out kind of covered area. Um, that I could use uh, so the viewers could could see in there. So um, just scrolling through and trying to find my parts and things like that. I was shocked at least, and I think I'm done. My guys are done researching the African exhibit at this point. Um, I was kind of shocked and bummed out that there's no, at least that I found anyway, you guys might know otherwise, there's no um, hanging African light. They're all surface mounted. Um, so I was a little bit bummed about that. Um, but... Yeah, so this is the, the elephant grass stuff, I think, is what it is that I ended up using um, just across that thing. And it turned out okay. I mean, in terms of, you know, having to find a solution um, as well as, you know, it being functional to block the cheetah path to, to through the river and, you know, up onto the sidewalk to where it eats people, um, it worked out pretty good that I used that elephant grass a lot of places. And you can see, yeah, they like, you know, like 7 to 9% stuff. So I'll stack some region-specific things kind of in the background. I didn't want it too crazy, although I did end up planting a couple gigantic trees. Yeah, these guys here, just because I think those are like the coolest trees ever. And it's neat to see them back there. It's probably realistically not very realistic in terms of the zoo regionally is located in uh, North America, I think, or in a temperate zone. So those probably would not grow there. <laughs> But uh, but it worked for the exhibit, so we'll just pretend that it does. So um, that's another thing, you know, kind of as time goes on, I play the game more and, you know, get a little bit better about broadcasting and things like that that, you know, improve. So um, placing some nice trees and some nice that elephant grass and the, the reeds and stuff there by the water. Um, what's it doing here? Yeah, the, the coverage is going up, you know, rapidly. And you only have... Well, I think, what, we're at 7 now, so maybe they like 10 or 12%, so you got to kind of use it sparingly. Although I was surprised that the reeds did let me uh, um, cover all the way across that river and still not push it over, although I think we got, you know, got pretty close, so. I did keep the inside of the, the, uh, the underneath of the sleeping area kind of bare. I did end up going back and add, in, add some bedding. Um, I must not have liked the way those two trees look there. So yeah, this is me still trying to figure out how in the heck, because I really wanted to keep that water moat, and I wanted that front end like really, really open. Um, the, the cool thing about the, I guess, the cave portion too, is the cheetahs don't really seem to mind that. They get pretty crowded, 
and the cheetahs don't really seem to mind that there's people in, you know, quite often in this one here, this main one where they sleep. They don't really seem to mind that people are on the other side of that glass watching them sleep and, you know, things like that. So um, I haven't got any complaints, although, you know, I just finished the exhibit and, uh, and I haven't gotten any stress notifications yet or anything like that. But so far it hasn't seemed to bother them much. So um, that's a plus. Just placing some random rocks around the exhibit when you don't have a whole bunch of, you know, uh, vegetation to work with. you got to kind of compensate by using some rocks and things like that. And I wanted it, you know, some kind of rocks around there. So, yeah, they can still get out no matter how sharp I made that cliff or anything else. It just wasn't, uh, wasn't working out. So that's kind of when I got the idea to, oh yeah, I had to swap the, swap the grass. And this was kind of when I noticed, yeah, that it dawned on me that, um, they can't cross the, uh, the grass. And I probably could have stopped there. It looks like, I guess, um, I bl successfully blocked off enough of the area, but I thought it'd be kind of cool. Oh, no. There we go. Yeah, it did uh, to work. Then, of course, then it started snowing on me, which is a drag to try to work through. And then you deal with heat because cheetahs don't like snow <laughs> from the uh, northwest part of the country or wherever I think this zoo is. Um, just plant some habitat stuff here, food and water, so we can get that guy fed. And I did want them, and you were, I was able to set them quite low, because I know if you, if you sink them so much, then it, uh, it mitigates how much surface area they block, and they stop blocking surface, but... I was able to get them low enough to where they, you know, were still kind of low, and I felt people could see over them from that wall. Although, I don't think there's a ton. I guess there is a ton of people that congregate there. That'll show that in the second video about where the congregation happens, um, where people gather and stuff to be able to view them. Um, so, but I wanted them low so people, I wanted that, you know, those those reeds and that grass there pretty low so people could see it um, from that outer edge. Um so yeah, I think our snow goes away here at some point. That'd be nice. But and then uh, of course adding the you know donation bins and the TVs. In terms of like the speakers, you know I haven't found where you locate. I, I mean I guess how to improve or you know exactly the education system yet. I guess I haven't figured out that part yet. Um, but I like to with the speakers because. Um, I've seen some where they like sink them or hide them or things like that. I always, if I can, I like to put them behind the TVs or the, the panels, the, uh, the information panels, because then I'll always know they're there. Um, if there's a TV that I have, or that there's the screen that I have the, uh, um, audio thing right behind it. Um, I just think I'll be able to find them easier that way. Um, and it's good for me to develop kind of systems like that so I can, know where to find stuff i would just i don't even know how if you sink it below the ground if you can ever select it again um i imagine you can i'm sure they've thought about that but i don't know how exactly they would do that so um it seems easier just to hide it kind of behind the tv which seems to work i keep calling it a tv poster information panel you know what i mean so anyway uh, as you can see cheetahs are expensive so this was uh, kind of a tough community challenge, especially for like a beginning zoo, uh, because I think mine are, uh, it were in the 600 and up type range. Um, so like a nice big exhibit. I think this thing at the end, even with all the, uh, the rocks and stuff that encroached the area, I think this exhibit ended up to be between 13 and 1400 square meters. Uh, so that's quite large. Um, I think they only needed about seven, so they have nearly double what they needed, or it could have even been smaller than that. But like I said, I've run into, you can see some of the other exhibits that I've had, where once they start breeding, you know, flamingos are, were notorious for it. The pangolins, were, I, which I thought that was a really cool animal to do, I did a, a walkthrough exhibit for both flamingos, which you can do, and pangolins, which I didn't know, but you can do walkthroughs on pangolins, the Chinese pangolin. Um, once they started breeding and stuff, it just was, it was out of control. Um, I did learn, I guess on that, on that thing, if you guys are doing like the walkthrough 
exhibits where the people can enter, um, and that information is in the animal bio. Um, it helps a lot to put up like do not disturb signs. I didn't know that at first, and I was getting constant, constant, um, you know, this animal stressed and upset. Um, you know, this is me trying to find a way to get a hanging light. I didn't like the way this looked, like this square middle po or square posts and you know round fencing. So that wasn't very cool. But um, anyway, if you if you put up the do not disturb signs, it actually helps quite a bit, and the people will chill out, and so it doesn't stress your animals out as much. Um, so that was really cool when I discovered that. It was kind of nice. Um, when I opened this exhibit, it was like gangbusters. I mean, there was tons of people. Tons of people going here. Almost the whole zoo like evacuated the main part and went, you know, to this uh, to this exhibit. So that was nice to see them go right away. And they used both undersides, both you know, or the this overside and then the long side, just about everything. So sorry, there's some extra garbage that popped up there. But uh, but anyway, yeah. So it you know it got busy, and uh, so that's nice. We had tons of people over there. Um, still trying to figure out. I let it roll for a little while so I can check everything out while I was trying to develop a fence. Um, I think this might have been the one I ended up using maybe, which is really a storefront face um, that I liked as just like a low sitting rail fence, which I probably could have, I guess, custom made to some degree maybe, but like there, this piece is already so beautiful and all I did was sink a little bit. Um, and so, you know, but like I said, I really wanted hanging lights. I was just bound and determined to get hanging lights on the rail of this thing, but I could not find them. So, um, I ended up going without, and, uh, I actually ended up using stall pieces, um, for both. Yeah. I was like, I can't find this. And I was going to turn this thing and try to find a chain, but like, I couldn't find, uh, anything that I could hang, even what was supposed to be this wall light, I just couldn't find anything to hang it from, which I hang it with. So, um, but I was trying to get this thing done, and so I, I probably could have looked closer and maybe found something. Uh, but I ended up using the stall face front, uh, which worked pretty well. And uh, yeah, it just came out, uh, it came out good. This is me tinkering with some, some general things to try to get that thing wrapped up. So, yeah, and then these are just stall awnings that I used um, because I wanted – now that at some point – I'll probably end up redoing this because I was not terribly happy with the way that those came out. Um, I wanted I wanted some kind of shady structure over it. Um, so, you know, like I said, it, it kind of worked, but that probably needs some refinement. So I got to figure that out, but I'll, you know, probably just do a real quick, you know, update. Maybe I'll have an update here in the next uh, couple weeks or whatever about what, what solution I've come up with, with to do that. Um, so looks like we went into, I must have got a phone call or something here. So. Seems like a rather long phone call. But yeah, so um, so anyway, guys, these uh, I'll, you know, hopefully I'll get a little bit more skilled at uh, you know broadcasting and and uh, recording audio for these videos and things like that, and uh, give you guys some more kind of tips. Oh, we're back. Phone call must have ended, but. Uh, yeah, um, in between, you know, doing the exhibits, I'm kind of doing from buildings from time to time and, and things like that. Um, I think I ended up settling on a different roofing system or, you know, um, yeah, I think this is the one I ended up using. Yeah, that looks more familiar. So I'm just trying to adjust it uh, to that, that pillar. The weird thing was is on this, the grid for the... Uh, stall shops and everything didn't exactly match the sidewalk course that would be nearly impossible to do but um, it was close so like I said this was kind of a temporary solution I need a better one but uh, I'll do that in a separate video I really just wanted to get the uh, the shading system in and and get this thing cruising because I was like I said I was hoping to pump out all kinds of cheetahs but um, so anyway that, uh, that's nearly all of it. Um, there's part two uh, coming up after this. 
um, I'll do it'll be a separate video but um, I'll give you guys some insight as to what I did for the inside of this this barrier or this exhibit and uh, the the crowd side I guess so you can see a little bit more detailing and uh, I really appreciate you uh, watching take care